Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Hope everybody's having a great day. The sun's out, which is nice. Uh, it's been so much rain. We want to thank our Patreons again for their support over there. Again, for just a dollar a month, you could join the Patreon family. And usually two, sometimes three times a week, we do exclusive uh, shows over there where uh, we speak a little more clearly. Now we want to share some real fun and interesting stuff. This is this is a fun one. We just kind of got some curious information. And we thought, well, let's look into that and let's see what's, where it's going here. Yeah, and this is a pyramidal shape. I think we could clearly see that. It looks kind of pyramidal. This is in Antarctica, and there's been a lot of talk about, well, what is the truth about mysterious pyramid or pyramids down in Antarctica? Not only that, but I want to share this with you. This face was also found, and that looks like a face to me, and if it wasn't a face that I was very familiar with, you know, I might not feel so strongly about this face as you see I, I did do we did videos on this researchers discover giant alien face where in Antarctica that sure looks like a face with you know one of those pointy pope hats on is what it looks like to me and you could see where this is uh, again it's down there in some curious areas in Antarctica now why did I say that about this face looking so familiar because Years ago, I asked a gifted, gifted psychic lady from the UK uh, that was still a follower of the channel, and Cindy nods because she's still in contact with Allison, and uh, I asked her, what does Inky look like? And she had a technique where she could draw up spirits, uh, images of spirits, images of beings into a bowl of water, and when we asked, what does Inky look like? This is what we got. So I ask you, does that that face look like that face? Look at it. Look at the nose. Look at the eyes. Look at the hat. You wonder why they wear Pope hats. You wonder why they wear, uh, you know, the, the <laughs> all the vestibules that the papacy and the cardinals do. It's again because the power is given to them from the Anunnaki uh, via the Draco and also those that we call the Ajiji. This looks like that to me. And so tell me, guys, am I, am I just seeing things? Uh, can you imagine if you really are looking at the face of Enki? Enki. It looks like he's looking at us as we look at him. He is pretty creepy, you know, and a lot of experts would tell you, oh, that's just the human mind wanting to put faces on everything it sees because it's just a human mind. That's really, that's nothing. And, and we know how the science and experts always end up being right. You know, you got to, you got to kind of question them these days. They continue to prove themselves over and over and over as, you know, just sort of making stuff up to help fit their narrative. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of people have wondered why in the world with so little down in Antarctica do we have officials going down to Antarctica? Here you see we absolutely need to act immediately, says UN chief, during a visit to Antarctica. Yeah, this is Antonio Gutierrez and he goes to Antarctica. This was November 24, 2023 ahead of a climate sub uh, meeting again. You know, the reality is Antarctica, oh, it's hiding a lot of skeletons in that closet. It's just, we've seen them constantly. Did you see Hacinda Ardern? You know, she's no longer in the public eye like she was. Certainly, uh, this was somebody that has become very, very disliked in many circles for really good reasons. This is going back to October 28th, 2022. What did she do? She went to Antarctica. What? She wanted to see the effects of global warming. Yeah, sure. Don't buy it a second. You're going to meet with your bosses. That's what you're going to do. Here you have John Kerry. And this was back in 2016, lands in Antarctica. 
You had the Pope going to Antarctica, along with Obama going to Antarctica. You had the leader of the Eastern Orthodox Church going to Antarctica. They're going to take orders from the real controllers. The real controllers that are not human. They're not homo sapiens. They're humanoid. Yes, none other than those that we call the Anunnaki, who are just basically lying in the shadows. So the question, why are world leaders visiting Antarctica? They're meeting face to face with beings that are not from Earth. That's the simple answer. It is, and Antarctica is one of the places where there's a whole lot of AI. It is, it's almost like this belly button of, it's like a, the center of a nerve for everything else. And in this belly button, there's all kinds of different AI touch attached to other technologies attached to other ai attached to other technologies and everything seems to ooze out from that one specific point like there's technologies in there that i i I can't describe they're beyond what i would understand or even have words for but i know that they're there i know that they're there and i know that these other beings are going to to see them these other people and they're definitely going to take orders so I mean, this isn't a trip that any old person could just go and do on a whim. And don't forget the uh, historical operation high jump. This was the the United States Navy Antarctic Developments Program, 1946 to uh, 47. This was so significant because, again, uh, this has become steeped in lore and legend. You have Admiral Byrd going down there. You have them losing people, losing ships, losing planes. And the reality is many believe that they went down there to check out and how advanced the Nazis were becoming uh, as there had been a lot of UFOs that were sighted flying saucers. Now, we know that the, the Nazis were building these things and they were given the the blueprints the technology again from the real control system and there's a lot of records of nordic pleiadians amongst uh, greys etc and they went down to uh, antarctica there was new schwabenland there w- there was a base in antarctica that nazi germany had and again hitler did not die Uh, In Germany, he escaped uh, to South America, but he also went down to Antarctica. And the reality is uh, we we don't get that he's actually really died in a normal sense because they do have technology to keep people going uh, for a very, very long time. So Antarctica is just steeped, steeped in mystery and interest. And then we came across this. This is into thin air. Something massive left Antarctica during the solar eclipse. Caught on radar. Well, what's interesting is what they're picking up on is some sort of swells. Now, it, it's, it's showing as waves. And when we go to Vent- Ventusky over here, you can see um, this is when it first appears. And it feels glitchy <laughs> This is showing 58 feet high waves, 30 foot high waves, 72 foot, 4 foot, 5 foot. This is causing some sort of crazy glitch in the system. Now, is it just a glitch in the system and this is nothing to look at? Well, uh, when I showed this to Cindy, immediately she picked up uh, Anunnaki all over it. Anunnaki all over it and she picked up this is something. So, you know, again, Cindy is somebody with not only amazing healing gifts, but she can and does uh, talk to the dead. She has been able to find pretty much everybody's um, family members that have departed, check in on them, see how they're doing. You know, think Whoopi Goldberg in the movie Ghost. We, we always have beings that are knocking on our doors, turning our, our lights on and off and stuff. Because they know Cindy can see them and and they do communicate through her. Well, you know, she can also detect things like this. And so this absolutely does not feel like it's just simply some sort of computer error or some sort of, you know, glitch in the system. 
it feels like there's something much more to this. And so what we're looking at here is Tuesday the 9th. Now the eclipse was on the 8th. So this is Tuesday the 9th. Um, I think in his video he states that it, it popped up somewhere between 5 and 8 a.m. I'm showing it here at 7 p.m. It looked like maybe it popped in around 6 or 7 p.m. Now this, when you look over here, these show the swells and you can see the different colors, you know, uh, as far as how high these uh, waves are. And yeah, absolutely, this is glitchy. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, are they really this high, 83, 86 foot? Because in certain spots, then it drops down to zero at some points. It's very glitchy, but there's something there's something here is, is the point. And we were playing with this a little bit, and it does stay in there for a period of time, as you see. Here we're at 10 p.m., and it seems to be growing a little bit. We move forward to the 10th, and you see it's expanding outwards, and it's showing 83.7 feet in this <laughs> whole area right here right now now here's some spots where it goes down are the are they really that big what type of storms were going on now is this anything to do with the south atlantic anomaly and then this gets me thinking what's really going on with the south atlantic anomaly in the first place because as we've said if you are trusting in any of the official readings any of the stuff that comes from the scientists you gotta realize they're giving us information that's that's coming from you know what they are observing so then we're trusting what they're observing we're trusting all the numbers and data that they're crunching and ultimately they're the system they're in the system so you know when it comes to any of those science uh, any of the science, you're really trusting the system. Can we trust the system? Uh, well, you know, there's a Japanese scientist that just came out with some interesting statements that we'll, we won't go into on this one, but trusting the system gets us in a lot of trouble. So, you know, here you see it on the 10th, and it's it does stay around for part of the 11th, if we reel it back but it basically heads north there you go it heads alongside here four o'clock i'm not sure if it's even glitching more now than because it seems like some of the readings that we're getting are not exactly what he got like four or five hours ago but anyway I will give this to Cindy and let her share what she feels because I trust her way more than I trust any science. Well, I'm definitely going to do my best here because, again, this is probably my biggest weakness is not having the right words for the technology that we are dealing with, not having the right words for the types of beings that we're dealing with. But what came to me was like a big change under the water. Like, is it a huge, huge, huge ship? Is it a huge city? But there's technology that it, there's changes being made. And do they have to release water? Do they have to release air? There's something huge under here that was changed. And I keep feeling what comes up over and over and over is big city, underwater city. And also when I look into it deeper, I'm feeling like there's like this nestling inside the earth. I don't think this is inner earth. I think it's in between those layers. So, I mean, I think this is something really huge. And I, I think changes were made with uh, technology from above, technology from below. Even when our own when our own eclipse came, I, I think there's a timing to the frequency where they're going to be able to start doing things that they weren't able to do before. Like if you look um, in in the Vedas, they they describe those uh, these huge giant spaceships, and they even describe during different ages they use different components to make them because the etheric realms are different. 
I really believe that our etheric realm went through a huge change over the eclipse. Something changed. And I, I think with that information, these beings are so knowledgeable of inner earth, outer space, on earth. They can build these huge cities or these huge mechanisms that can actually grow. They can expand um, and just bring about these anomalies that, you know, I'm sure somebody's going to come along with, with a, a reasonable scientific explanation. They always do trust the science, right? But I'm just telling you guys what I feel, what comes to me immediately. Uh, <laughs> I just don't have an, enough words for it, but that's what I feel right away. This is a big thing. Now, the scary part is, is I picked up, it could cause catastrophe, they, they got to be careful. It could cause big waves coming in. Um, it could cause earth issues. So this is not a small movement. This is a big deal. I feel like there was some risk involved. I, I, I think we're probably pretty clear, but I would definitely watch this area over the next couple of weeks. So here's what um, I've been expecting. Yeah, as I've shared, the guide said, when we were moving, because we wanted to get farther away from the border areas, we wanted to find a place that would be a little bit more towards the center. Um, as they had said, go towards the center of the country. Um, and, you know, I, I always, being more of a beach person, was pushing, well, how about over here? How about over there? And then they just said, stay away from the coastal areas and they they said to avoid the coastal areas when, when pushing them for more information they said there will be massive amounts of people in the united states moving away from the coastal areas because they're going to be forced to and what i'm taking it is that there's going to be coastal flood events as well as war events and this, I'm wondering, is this moving some sort of technology into place to cause um, that, to cause, you know, inundations, massive inundations along the coastline that might look like La Palma, maybe over in um, the Pacific, something like the Helena slump going because of a big earthquake. Again, there's technology that does exist to create earthquakes. We know that. We've gotten from the guides that the Algeria earthquake was actually a warning to the leadership of that country to go along with the script. Do not go against the control system. And when you look into the Bible and it, and it talks about going against the wishes of, of God, and you realize that that God is, 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 is not really translating. When you go to the Old Testament, it's specifically talking about uh, extraterrestrial beings. It's not talking about the creator of this universe. And then they would send a flood, or they'd send a drought, or they'd send a famine, or they send plague, or they send pestilence. The guides have said that it will no longer be unclear. So it's going to be very clear who the real controllers are in, in, in the not too far off future, within about three years time. And they said, we don't know if you're human controllers, the, the ones that are really working for the extraterrestrial controllers will share exactly um, themselves. But you will know that the real controllers uh, well, just who they are. And, and they're the same ones that, again, show in the um, pictures that we get from Sumeria and Acadia, humans tied at the neck, hands tied behind the back, coming up before these giants. It's the same Anunnaki, you know, and this is why you have Wikipedias on Anunnaki. Um, you know, again, Anunnaki is, is a broad term because there's many different races. Some are more reptilian, some are, are not really that much reptilian. Uh, there's a wide variety of sizes and colors as well, but typically they are the ones that we see depicted as, as giants. And they are the real controllers, and they themselves are controlled by those that we call the Draco which are enslaved to the AI system that they created eons ago and not even from our world and not even from our galaxy, not even really from our universe. But this, I do feel, is um, my gut is telling me they're getting the technology in place to cause 
those things that we've been talking about, uh, the big quakes. And what's going to come with the big quakes is going to be massive uh, inundations, floods, tsunamis. And that's going to cause massive migrations of people that have survived the inundations but can no longer live there. And that's what the guys have shared with us. You know, stability, 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 stability is what we need to bring to the forefront. And um, that your your energy and your ability to ground and protect the area that you're at is very important. So even though we might be looking at things like this with the possibility of these beings creating some kind of a catastrophe, that doesn't mean we can't do anything. Um, that's the one like component that I feel we've been missing is people feel so helpless, but you are not. If you're one who is listening to this channel or other channels like it, who have the understanding and the clear knowledge that there's other beings out there, then you are one of those who should be using your energy to help protect your area. So don't, don't hesitate. Don't feel small, you know shine that light shine it all around all around yourself and your loved ones and the whole area that you're in i mean look at look at these massive waves look at look at the waves of energy guys look at what this is showing look at this mm -hmm. do you see this mm -hmm. so again where you where people have taken things to be the act of the creator of this universe and they just say god they're given homage to those that are suppressing us to those that wipe us out and, and they restart us up time and time again look at these waves of energy coming out this where's the waves coming from it's coming from antarctica area and it's coming from under the ocean you know the one thing that the flat earthers and and the uh, more fundamentalists do kind of get right is the fact that space is not a vacuum and where it talks about separating the waters above from the waters below yeah you know because there is abundant life out there and what we've gotten is uh that space is more like an ocean than it is a vacuum and it is like a less dense water so to speak and yeah, there is a barrier. It's just like the barrier in a cell, as above, so below. Each cell has a semi-permeable membrane. Things can come in, things can come out, but it does also act as a barrier for things that shouldn't come in to cause infection, etc. And these controllers, they're an infection on the planet. The planet is going to shake them off at some point in time. Um, and, and there will be uh, a lot of natural uh, cleansing going on. But right now, what they're doing, this is technology. Look at that signal coming from Antarctica. That signal is, is causing a disturbance. And here we are, April 11th, that I'm doing this. Um, if I had to, and my best guess has, has still been sometime probably by the middle of May, um, and between now and the middle of May, we'll, we'll see some of the great quakes happen. And I do think it's after the great quakes uh, that the Red Dawn invasion happens uh, of the U.S. And that's, you know, again, uh, it's just part of the, the big script. And people will still look and they'll just think, well, the Bible's talked about all this, so the Bible must be right. Well, you know, there's Hopi prophecy, there's prophecies that are given in the Vedas, there's prophecies given in every corner of the globe. It doesn't mean that, that, that the Bible is talking about the creator of this universe, because it's not talking about the creator of this universe, it's talking about the creator of the dark system. And when you talk to, you know, the two creations in Genesis, uh, one's referring to the recreation of earth from the remnants of Tiamat or the rebirth of Tiamat anew as what we would call earth in this point in time. So yeah, that feels to me like they are initiating some sort of uh, operation tribulation. Yeah, we'll definitely keep an eye on it. And this is what we do. We, we watch, we watch and we watch and we see 
what's going to happen and we give the information to you so that you guys don't always have to sit at the edge of your seats and watch this stuff because I know we're in a time where something is going to happen. We can feel it and this is our job. We are watchers. We help those who who are supposed to be prepared for stuff like this and this is just what we do. Yeah, so that will be our... Uh our little snippet there, a little clip for the video. I hope you guys will search into this yourselves too, because so many people have amazing abilities like Cindy right now. Uh, she's not alone in her abilities. There are amazing beings out there that are getting turned on, and we worked on one beautiful person in person, which was a blessing today. And, you know, we do... Uh, Gosh, you know, we do sessions all the time with people all over the world. This is technology. Uh, this is not natural. This is technology, and, uh, and I don't feel it's got anything positive, really, and beneficial in mind for humanity. I, I don't feel positivity, and I don't feel beneficial. I feel that this is a manipulation of something. This was their time to do something during the eclipse when things changed and and like i've said before i think in this world things might get a little bit worse before they get better but they are definitely going to get better and when it comes to compatibility people who are remaining organic or want to be organic or people who don't want to be in the control system point your rudder in that direction and manifest it because you can don't think that you're stuck ever don't ever think that you're stuck there's always a way to uh, get around or away from certain situations. And that separation of energy, it's going to be here. And if you're one who wants to be separated from this energy, you can be. You can be. Yeah, there is a creator of this universe. And that is a being that is full of love and compassion. Has nothing to do with the dark, uh, jealous, vindictive nature that we see described in that book. As always, guys, look forward to your comments. Please do share this video and it'll help to awaken as many as possible. As I say, it's 333. Let's manifest some positivity and let's short circuit their programming. Much love. Namaste. Namaste.